Hello, welcome to the continuous cardiac education program from the UN Meta Institute of Cardiology, Ahmedabad. Today's our session on uh, anesthetic management of transposition of great arteries. Uh, transposition of the great artery is the most common cyanotic congenital heart lesion that present in neonatal age. It is defined as a ventricular arterial discordance along with atrioventricular concordance. Aorta arises from the morphologic right ventricle and pulmonary artery arises from the morph morphological left ventricle. It accounts for about 1 20th of all congen congenital heart diseases but contributes more than one fifth of all the mortalities you found in the infant age due to congenital heart disease. Matthew Bailey first described the case of TGA in 1797 and John Ferre later on coined the term transposition. Mortality is approximately 30% in first week, 50% in first month and 90% by the end of the first year if untreated. But with improved diagnostic, medical and surgical techniques, the overall short term and mid term survival rate exceeds 90%. TGA is isolated in 90% of cases, rarely associated with syndromes or extra cardiac malformations, more common in infants of diabetic mothers, maternal intake of alcohol, poor nutrition and stressful life event during pregnancy increases the risk of transposition in offspring. You can see uh, side by side uh, figure of normal heart and heart with transposition of the great arteries. D transposition refers to a spatial orientation of aorta. Aorta is to the right and anterior in most of the cases, but it is not uncommon to found in any position. Both the great arteries run in parallel in transposition and do not cross over like in normal. So what happens? Some you can see that a flow through the LV goes directly predominantly to the right pulmonary artery as compared to in normal it is divided both uh, in right and left equally it is preferential right flow in uh, TGA. Sub aortic conus separates tricuspid valve from the aorta while there is a fibrous continuity between pulmonary valve and mitral valve. There may be associated abnormalities like uh, interatrial communication PFO or second ASD is more common. PDA usually is small or sometimes insignificant. VSD may be present, it may be perimembranous inlet or infundibulum. Coarctation of aorta or interrupted aortic arch may be present. If TGA comes along with VSD, chances of other anomalies are more. Uh, Malalignment of infundibular septum may cause RVOTO or LVOTO. Anterior deviation of infundibular septum may cause right ventricular outflow tract obstruction or posterior deviation may cause left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Additional causes of left ventricular outflow tract obstructions are fibrous tissue tags on the septum, attachment of mitral valve and dynamic obstruction by bulging septum in patient with intake ventricular septum. Posterior deviation results in subpulmonic obstruction in some patients with VSD. Now comes to pathophysiology. There are two parallel circuits in TGA unlike a series circulation in normal. So what happens? Oxidated blood from pulmonary veins recirculates from left atrium to left ventricle to pulmonary artery and deoxygenated systemic venous blood recirculates through right atrium to right ventricle to aorta. Therefore, after birth survival is only possible if there is a mixing between the two circulations. So net volume of blood passing from one circulation to other should remain the same over a short period of time. Otherwise what happens? One circuit gets volume overloaded while the other gets uh, depleted of the blood. Pathophysiology. Uh, Clinical presentation and management of these patients depends on presence or absence of associated lesions like in patient with TGA with interventricular septum or patient with large VSD or patient with large ASD with interventricular septum and 
TGA with VSDPS, all these subsets have different presentation, different pathophysiology and you have to manage accordingly. Sorry. Uh, in any congenital heart disease, most important factor that determines arterial saturation is pulmonary blood flow. But in TGA, it is the amount of mixing between pulmonary and systemic circulation. It is equally important, uh, uh, important factor in absence of large communication. Though pulmonary blood flow is large, oxygen saturation decrease. When there is effective uh, mixing, arterial saturation is improved, but it may cause left ventricular failure. So, in t patient with TGA with intact vent uh, ventricular septum usually present with uh, deep cyanosis, tissue hypoxia and acidosis that can be improved with infusion of prostaglandin E1 to, uh, to make duct patent and or BAS. So, whenever these patients present usually they require emergent management uh, preoperatively as well as gel Im immediate surgery as well as as when as and when possible tga uh, ventri uh, with ventricular septal defect uh, adequate mixing is possible with moderate size of vsd right to left shunting during ventricular systole due to low pulmonary vascular resistance and volume overload of left ventricle causes left to right shunt during diastole cyanosis is usually mild but present with signs and symptoms of heart failure but these patients have more chances of pulmonary vascular obstructive disease to their nor normal counterpart. It may be due to hypoxia and due to collateral vessels that develop earlier in these type in these patients. TGA with uh, VSD with pulmonary stenosis, there is a progressive cyanosis as patient grows, cyanosis deepens, depends on the severity of obstructions and large PDA may help in prolonged survival of these type of patients. This type of patient may survive up to uh, teenage without any difficulty. Uh, you can see X-ray of this patient. There is an increased pulmonary blood flow with preferential flow to the right lung because of, as we have discussed in TGA, RP is more in direction with left ventricle and LPA is slightly angulated. There is a narrow vascular pedicle uh, related to position of great vessels because at, at aorta is anterior and pulmonary artery is posterior and there is absence of thymic shadow. It can uh, be present as a egg lying on its side appearance or egg on string appearance. ECHO is diagnostic of TGA. In addition to diagnosis of TGA, it is helpful for diagnosis of additional defects, bioventricular function, coronary anatomy as well as ECHO guided BAS is helpful to overcome severe cyanosis and hemodynamic compromise till definitive treatment is done. It, we can evaluate patterns of shunting and biventricular function. You can see uh, TGA in uh, parasternal long axis view, aorta is arising from the right ventricle and pulmonary artery arising from the left ventricle and in parasternal short axis view. Relationship of the great arteries are anteroposterior. Aorta is usually anterior and rightward in pulmonary artery. It is also also called double barrel uh, echo. Assessment of left, left ventricle in delayed presentation usually posterior wall thickness should be more than 3.5 mm at the level of papillary muscle. Shape of LV is important if it is globular, it is prepared, if it is crescent or banana shape, it is uh, not prepared. Movement of interventricular septum, either it is moving with the left ventricle or moving with the right ventricle. LV mass, if it is less than 35 gram per meter squares, there is chances of regression of the LV. LV pressure it should be more than 66 percent of the systemic pressure. You can see in this uh, echo image of uh, LV that is banana shape, uh, this uh, slide. Preoperative evaluation, assessment of hemodynamic status, inotropic support, 
any erythrias peripheral or central art venous cannulation should be done umbilical if no, other veins are not available umbilical veins and umbilical arterial access should be done laboratory values should be shown screening for sepsis should be done chest radiograph ecg and if there is any ventilatory state uh, issues are there airway issues are there or not and status of other organ systems should be checked before going for the surgery uh, risk factors that increases the chances of morbidity and mortality post operatively are restrictive pfo with or restrictive asd persistent pulmonary hypertension low birth weight prematurity and time to diagnosis so it is nowadays it is practice that fetal diagnosis of the this type of patients are done and they are, they are uh, the patients are delivered in the uh, tertiary care hospital so that we can immediately manage the patient initial management most admissions are severe dehydration cyanosis and metabolic acidosis particularly patients with intact ventricular septum initially volume therapy in addition to oxygen should be given correction of metabolic acidosis should be done if duct is patent then start low dose prostaglandin infusion if duct is uh, duct is uh, not patent then you uh, give high dose of prostaglandin to make the, the patent increase pulmonary blood flow and volume overload results in right to left uh, left to right something at the atrial level complications related to prostaglandin are apnea bradycardia hypotension or hypersensitivity reaction so wherever you start high dose of prota, uh, prostaglandin make preparation um, make uh, be ready for uh, intubation and ventilatory management maintain uh, normothermia ventilation required in many patients high fio2 tend to close the duct and produce inadequate oxygenation you are in patient with large asd try to maintain saturation so try to maintain saturation between 80 to 85 percent aggressive ventilation with high peep and high intrathoracic pressure may compromise pulmonary blood flow and decreases the saturation emergency balloon atrial septostomy or raskin procedure should be done either at the bedside and the, uh, by uh, eco guidance or in cath lab as a emergency procedure successful bas is sold by immediate improvement in saturation at least 5 mm defect on the eco and there is a increased flutter of lower margin of the septum ideal operation is arterial switch operation for these patients it is anatomic repair and establishes ventricular arterial call cordas usually done in patients younger than 4 weeks of age but can be done up to 2 weeks nowadays two stage switch is done in which a uh, patient is operated for switch and put on uh, the uh, ecmo or patient is done uh, patient had done pa band with uh, any uh, shunt or pds tenting and then later on after when lv is prepared we can do switch as lv may not be able to handle systemic pressure post operatively it is if it is left too long in the low pressure low resistant pulmonary circuits rarely however depending on the particular coronary anatomy coronary artery translocation may not be feasible and arterial switch is not recommended it is also contraindicated in infant with significant left ventricular outflow tract obstruction you can see figure of uh, arterial uh, switch in which aorta is uh, pulmonary artery is uh, after doing lecom pulmonary artery is transferred uh, anteriorly and aorta is transferred posteriorly and, uh, you can see a coronary buttons also now anesthetic goals our goal is to maintain heart rate contractility and preload maintain duct patency with prostaglandin till patient goes on bypass avoid increases in pvr relative to svr and avoid decreases in svr related to pvr in patient with in, uh, TG, tga with vsd and signs and symptoms of uh, failure interventions to reduce pvr are not indicated monitoring femoral artery monitoring or radial artery can be monitored if required cvp for infusion as well as inotropes 
एस पी ओ टू इट इस ओ टू ए बी जी ई सी जी टेम्परेचर नेजो फ्रीजर एंड रैक्टर यूरिन आउटपुट मॉनिटर ए सी टी एंड नीड्स इफ पॉसिबल नार्कोटिक एंड और इनहेलेशन बेज एनेसिया कैन बी गिवन वेंटिलेशन विथ सिक्स टू एट एम एल ऑफ टाइलर वॉल्यूम विथ लो पीप एंड लो एफ आई ओ टू प्राइमिंग विथ प्लाज्मा लाइट ए ब्लड एंड आलबीबिन प्रोसीजर शुड बी डन अंडर मॉडरेट टू डीप हाइपोथर्मिया विद और विदाउट कार्डिया करेस्ट टोटल सर्क्यूरेटी एरस हिमोटोक्रिट इज मेन्टेन एट मोर देन अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ड्यूरिंग हाइपोथर्मिया कार्डियोप्लेजा यूजली वी गीव डेल नीडो कार्डियोप्लेजा एंड फर्स्ट इनिशियली वी गीव थ्रू रूट एंड देन थ्रू कॉरोरी बटन वी कैन गीव कार्डियोप्लेजा क्रॉस क्लैम्प इज रिमूव आफ्टर एवोटिक एंड कॉरोनरी रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन एंड पलमोनी आर्टरी रिपेयर इज डन आफ्टर डी क्लैम्पिंग डी क्लैम्पिंग द एवोटा कफ एंड मफ शुड बी डन सो देट It reduces inflammatory mediator as well as it reduces the volume load and improves the hemodynamic. Hematocrit should be raised to 40 percent after 40 45 percent after MUF. Mean arterial pressure around 35 millimeter Hg is accepted in infants with intraventricular septum, while it requires more in patient with VSD. Spontaneous improvement in myocardial and pulmonary function is noted after MUF. Patient is weaned off at CPB uh, from CPB at 36 degree centigrade. PD catheter should be put before and open chest decision is based on intraoperative course of the patient and hemodynamics of the patient. LA line or PA line decision as per requirement of that particular case. Post operatively, we have to ventilate to achieve normal respiratory parameters with minimum FiO2. ST segment should be monitored mandatorily in all patient with post operative period because as there may be a chances of coronary artery kinking or coronary artery narrowing that may causes ST segment elevation and may require emergency intervention nitroglycerin infusion may be used in some centers or inhaled nitric oxide is used in cases of elevated PA pressures suboptimal lv in tga with further intraoperative ischemia and then working against a systemic uh, svr after surgery put lv at upper part of pressure volume curve and reduction in afterload to lv is mandatory so we can add ino dilators along with the inotropes volume infusion should be cautiously given as sudden uh, gushes of volume may causes Uh, dilatation of the pulmonary artery and that may kink the coronaries. Milinone or levocimendane is used for afterload reduction. Epinephrine is used for inotropic support without adding its alpha effect. Our post-operative management in cases of intact septum hemodynamic goals is to maintain mean arterial pressure around 35 millimeter Hg. And as we have discussed, spontaneous increase in blood pressure occurs as LV improves. Excessive drop in pressure due to vasodilatation or uh, may require reduction in the dose of melinone or add small doses of uh, vasopressors like norepinephrine. Combination of inodilators and vasopressors used while requiring higher mineral pressure in patient with uh, a Uh, TGA with VSD. Milinone or dobutamine can be used. Hypotension initially managed with volume therapy if LA pressure is low, and low CVP managed by blood components or albumin. Negative fluid balance of 25 to 50 ml per kg per day is targeted initially for two days. PD is used in patient where there is not this is not achieved or when renal failure sets in. Early enteral feeding should be started as and when possible. Usually, we are giving feeding after, mostly after six hours, if patient is hemodynamically stable. Attention is directed towards lowering the length of stay in ICU, uh, in the ICU and the hospital. Early extubation strategies in many centers are nowadays used. Sedation and ventilation for initial few hours followed and. 
when a patient is hemodynamically stable, exubate as early as possible. Intermediate sedation like midazolam and continuous analgesia with narcotic like fentanyl infusion can be given. Uh, now comes to post-operative management of low cardiac mortality. Commonly these, uh, these patients go in low cardiac output in post-operative period. So echo is useful in identifying the cause of the LV dysfunction. It may be due to residual lesion or outflow tract obstruction or new region of wall motion abnormalities can be seen. Size and shape of LV you can assess and any arrhythmias are there. Impaired LV function usually treated with further afterload reduction and inotropes. Vasopressors to maintain coronary perfusion in case of low blood pressure with good LV function. LVOTO treated with reduction in afterload, reduction in afterload reducing agents and volume infusion. High lactates for more than 12 hours are associated with increased morbidity and mortality. Now we can uh, do integrated ECMO with ASO in infants with borderline LV. When you see LV is not prepared, you prepare with, uh, you go for ASO with integrated ECMO circuits. It is likely to be difficult, uh, likely to be difficult in these cases from win to win from CPV. Daily ECHO monitoring should be done and try to win when LV mass is adequate or shape of the LV changes to globular and septum moves along with the LV. Then you can uh, remove ECMO. Uh, when patient presented late with regress LV, either you can do atrial switch or two stage arterial switch operation. In atrial switch, either you go, go for Senning's operation or procedure or Mustard procedure and in two stage, either PA bending with or without uh, uh, autosystemic shunt and followed by arterial switch. Immediate mortality is much lesser in atrial switch, but later on RV dysfunction is more common along with uh, uh, arrhythmias, life threatening arrhythmias are more common in atrial switch. So nowadays patient, uh, nowadays surgeon prefers ASO early or two stage procedure over atrial switch procedure. We can see figure of atrial switch uh, where uh, IVC and SVC flow are diverted to LV and from LV it goes to pulmonary artery while pulmonary veins are uh, flow of pulmonary veins are diverted to RV through tunnel and uh, it goes into systemic uh, ventricle a uh, systemic artery sorry. To summarize it is the most sati satisfying and curative procedure in funds with congenital heart disease Post-operative care highlights the standard and care of the ICU. Inotropes should be used in a very scientific manner and with eco support or you can take support of L and PA pressures. General post-operative measures all add to the final outcome of these type of patients and in experience setter with good surgical repair, most patients can be extubated within 24 hours without any significant morbidity. Thank you.